When you think about large format additive manufacturing, it's natural to think of large additive printers like Thermwood's LSAM. For most people, large format additive means 3D printing. What if you want the benefits of additive but want to use something else? You know, something you just can't print. Hi, I'm Jody from Thermwood. And we can do just that. It's called cut layer additive. Instead of printing the additive layers, they are instead cut from sheets of material and assembled. It works with a lot of different materials, but in this video, I'm going to focus on using this process to make large additive parts from thermoset composites. Parts like this one. This is an aerospace production layup tool. Instead of being printed, it was made using cut layer additive. We started by making the part, the whole thing, from a porous base material. It was machined to final size and shape, then a penetrating epoxy added. It soaked in and hardened, producing the composite structure you see here. It was finished off with a plural component urethane coating. It's a hollow structure, as you can see here, made in layers, with a wall thickness you specify very much like what you're used to with large printed parts, except the layers are cut and assembled rather than printed. So what's the benefit of this? There are several, but the biggest is cost. Let me show you. Here is the same tool printed from a carbon fiber filled ABS. As you can see, they look very much the same, even though each was made using a totally different process. The original aerospace tool that these were both patterned after was made of metal. No telling how much that thing cost. The ABS printed fixture you see here was a low cost stopgap measure to get them into production while the metal tool was being finished. It used a bit over $9,000 worth of material. Clearly it was a lot less expensive than the original. The new cut layer additive composite thermoset fixture this one here is made from an epoxy fused fiberboard with a plural component urethane thermoset coating. This cut layer additive tool was produced using right at $2,000 worth of material. That's right, $2,000. Just amazing. If you're concerned that the need to assemble might offset low material cost, Realize that the entire build process, both cutting and assembly, for this part took less time and used less labor than it took to print the ABS part. Will this tool actually work? This type of tool may not work for every application, but from what we know of this one, it'll work just fine. It'll work great for an awful lot of applications. You know, if you really want metal, Cut layer additive can do that too. This is an aerospace trim fixture. And yes, it was made using cut layer additive. It's made from large sheets of inch thick, precision ground, cast aluminum jig plate. Although it looks solid, it's actually hollow as you see here. All of these surfaces are only a bit over an inch thick, which means it uses less material than about any other way of making it. High-speed CNC routing of aluminum is somewhat slower than routing many other materials, but it's many, many times faster than conventional machining, which means the entire process, you know, cutting and assembly, takes less time and labor than about any other way of making large aluminum molds and tools. In addition to tooling for aerospace, additive parts like this should be ideal for making large plastic molds for processes like thermoforming, blow molding, rotational molding, reaction injection molding, you know, processes that already use aluminum tools. Aluminum, however, won't hold up very well in high pressure plastic processes like injection or compression molding. These do need steel molds for volume production, but large aluminum cut layer additive molds might just be suitable for prototyping. That is validating a mold design before you commit to a hugely expensive steel production mold. 
As with the thermal set part we just saw, cut layer additive using aluminum is less expensive than about any other way of making the same part. The bigger the mold, the more impressive the savings. There's more. It's close, but not quite ready yet. We're working on a new, we think much better, certainly much simpler approach to making molds for the plastic processes I just mentioned using cut layer additive. It's different. It supports all the basic functions these processes need, but in a different way. Air vents for blow molding, a new approach to vacuum for thermoforming, internal fluid lines for temperature control that accurately follow the contour of the mold face, and all done at lower cost. Can't get into details right now, but it's pretty amazing. We'll let you know when it's ready, but for now, let's focus back on thermoset parts. Even though metal is an exciting world of its own, we decided to focus on thermoset cut layer additive in this first cut layer video because it's not only a somewhat unique use of this process, but it also produces large, high quality parts at the lowest cost of anything we've ever seen. So, if this is so great, why hasn't anyone done it before? It seems so obvious. There is a reason. CNC programming. To make a part this way, you need a CNC program to cut out the layers. If you just cut out whole layers, it's not going to work. To work right, you need to efficiently nest parts on your sheet stock, which you can't do with whole layers. You need to split each layer into segments and then nest the segments and not the whole layer. Then cut them out and put them back together. That means you need a way to reconnect these segments to make each layer. There are other requirements, such as dowel holes, to align layers during assembly. You should also add some extra material to each layer for trim stock. All this needs to be programmed, nested, and turned into CNC code. Programming a single segment like this using traditional programming requires serious effort by a skilled programmer. Programming hundreds upon hundreds of them that are all different, that all need to precisely work together, is a truly monumental programming task. And all this just to make a single part. It just doesn't make sense. That's why no one does it. The only way this works is if you don't have to program it. Is that even possible? Well, not with traditional technology, but we found a way. About nine years ago, we built a machine control with some special abilities. You could teach it to do things that you didn't need a program. Today, those special abilities are called machine intelligence. We enhanced that control and then taught it to make cut layer additive parts. Then we built a machine with that control specifically to make those parts. This machine. It's a cut layer additive machine and Basically, it has been taught how to make cut layer additive parts, which means you don't have to send it a CNC program. That's right, it knows how to do cut layer additive. What does that mean? It's simple. Just tell it what you want and it makes it. So how do you do that? It's easy. Two steps. Show it the shape and tell it how you want it made. You show it the shape by sending it a CAD file, not a detail file, just the basic shape. It will assume the outside surface of your CAD part is the final shape you want. Once it knows the shape, you then tell it how you want the part made. It knows the part will be made in layers, cut from sheets, so you need to tell it the size and thickness of the sheets you want to use. It knows you want the outer surface made into a wall. So you need to tell it how thick you want the wall. It knows it needs to split each layer into segments for nesting. So you need to show it about where you want the layer split. It knows that the separated segments of each layer will need to be put back together. So tell it what kind of assembly joint you want between segments. It knows that you will want to machine the outside surface after it's assembled. 
so tell it how much extra trim stock you'd like. It knows how to put matching dowel alignment holes between layers, so show it about where you want the dowels. Telling the machine what you want is actually pretty easy. It's an interactive process. You can do it right at the machine using graphics and a touch screen, or if you want, you can use your desktop and do it in the office. It takes a tiny fraction of the time it would otherwise take to program individual layer segments. Since the machine knows how to make an additive part from your CAD model, that's all you need to do. You're done. Once it knows what you want, it does the rest automatically. Everything. It creates an additive part from your CAD model, slices the part into layers, splits each layer into segments, adds connection geometry between segments, offsets for trim stock, staggers joints between layers, adds alignment holes for dowels, efficiently nests all the parts on your sheet material, and creates a multi-tool CNC program to cut it all out. And it does it all automatically. With an intelligent machine, the colossal programming task has become fundamentally simple, really easy. Cut layer additive now makes sense. Gone is the monumental programming task. All that's left is savings. Now you only need to tell the machine what you want. The smart machine handles the details and once it does, it cuts it all out. Cutting is also kind of smart. It knows how to cut long, thin parts without them moving, even parts that can't be held by vacuum. Guides you through each step, step by step. Automatically manages tooling and tool changes. It pretty much takes care of every aspect of the process. It makes the whole thing rather easy. Okay, now we have parts, lots of parts. But these parts all look kind of the same like a giant jigsaw puzzle. How do you know what's what? Again, the machine. In addition to cutting, it prints information on each part, telling you which layer it's on and its position on that layer. It also prints a QR code in case you ever have to recut it. Yes, it's smart enough to read the QR code, if it needs to. Now, assembly is easy. Just put it together. Segments lock together to make each layer. There are a lot of ways to attach layers to one another depending on material. Everything from adhesive bonding to screws, bolts, and rivets. Although it may sound involved, printed labels, precision machine joints, and dowel alignment make assembly surprisingly quick and easy. It even prioritizes early layers for cutting so you can begin assembling while the machine is still cutting. Overall, and this is really important, the entire process, cutting and assembly, takes at most the same amount of time as a thermoplastic additive printer takes to produce the same near net shape part. With some material, it's even faster, sometimes a lot faster. The materials we used for this initial demonstration thermoset piece are readily available off the shelf. They worked okay for this initial effort, However, other, more refined, core material and thermal set combinations tailored to this process would likely work even better. I expect, over time, better material combinations will be found. So that's cut layer additive. Let's look at it one more time. It makes large additive parts from material that can't be printed about any material available in sheets that can be routed or high-speed machined. Programming, you know the heavy lifting, is done by an intelligent machine, which means it's rather easy. Since the additive layers are split into segments, you can make things which, when assembled, are considerably larger than the machine that made them. Additive layers split into segments also means they can be rather efficiently nested, which means the final product is almost shockingly low cost. The machine that makes cut layer additive also costs much less than other large format additive systems. You do need a five axis system to trim the assembled part as you would with any large format near net shape additive system. This is really exciting. Such a simple idea, 
executed with cutting edge technology could have a profound impact on a lot of areas. The core technology for cut layer additive, which is pretty extensive, is already in place and working. As you've seen here, it's already capable of producing some truly outstanding products at incredibly low cost. We do plan to continuously advance and improve the technology while adding new features. Overall, there is a lot of potential to this new idea. We introduced our first machine that used machine intelligence in 2014. So we've been working with the technology for almost a decade. We know it. It works well. The cut layer machine itself is technology that we've been building and refining for decades. It performs extremely well in factories all over the world and has been proven to be highly reliable. So overall, cut layer additive combines a couple of proven technologies into something new and exciting. If you're interested in exploring this further, feel free to contact us. Thank you.